Hello and welcome. So here I am standing in the anatomical position. Now note that I have my, the palms of my hands facing forwards and although you can't see them, my feet are facing forwards as well. So my toes are pointing directly towards the camera. So this is the anatomical position that we use as a reference point for uh, speaking about or referring to anatomical structures. Now from this position there's lots of movements that can be done. So this would be, for example, flexion of the upper limb at the shoulder. So if I turn and show you that, that's flexion of the upper limb at the shoulder, that's extension of the upper limb at the shoulder. So we can move into an extended position and then flex from there. Now then, again, flexion at the elbow would be this, and then extension at the elbow would be this movement, and flexion at the wrist of the hand would be this movement, and then extension there, and then of course we can also flex the fingers or the digits and then extend them as well. So that's flexion and extension of the upper limb. We can then flex the thigh at the, at the hip or extend the thigh at the hip. We can flex the leg at the knee and then extend the leg at the knee as well. Then there's also abduction and adduction. So abduction is taking something away from the midline adduction is bringing it back and of course we can abduct and adduct the lower limbs as well as the upper limb and then of course we can also abduct the digits away from the midline and then adduct them as well then we've got lateral and medial rotation now the best way to demonstrate these movements because they're a bit tricky if you stay with your limbs extended the best way to demonstrate them is to flex the upper limb to 90 degrees at the elbow, sorry, so flex the forearm to 90 degrees at the elbow, then if I medially rotate my upper limb, you can see where the movement takes place. The hand is the bit that moves the most, but the movement's actually taking place up here at the shoulder. So this would be lateral rotation of the upper limb at the shoulder, and this would be medial rotation. Now if I do that from the anatomical position, there's not so much to see, it's not as obvious a movement. So that's medial and lateral rotation. And then if we combine flexion and extension and abduction and adduction, if we do all those as a combined movement, the movement we can perform at that joint is circumduction. So this is circumduction and of the upper limb, and of course I can do a much bigger circle, so that would be circumduction of the upper limb at the shoulder. We can also circumduct just the hand at the wrist. So this would be circumduction of the hand and with our fingers we can circumduct our fingers as well. Naturally of course we can also circumduct the lower limb too and we can circumduct our whole trunk so we can make that same sort of movement with the whole vertebral column as well or just with the, with the head. So that would be circumduction and that's pretty much all the movements that I wanted to go through.